With this new wave of COVID, I can imagine it's difficult being cooped up in your homes again. Just when we thought 2020 was behind us. Now, this can be a tough time for many, as you're more likely in the know of someone having COVID. You know, the, the, the universe has a way of bringing obstacles and challenges in our lives at the most unexpected times. And one has to believe that there is a reason for it. Maybe it's to test our character, to make us stronger so that we can evolve and be better. And honestly, I find that this is the best perspective to have during a time like this. What's even better is to use times like these to cultivate new habits in your life. Habits that could give you extra energy and more calm in your mind that many of us could use right now. You know, one of the conclusions that I've drawn over the last couple of years is that energy is just the first principle of doing anything great or meaningful in life. Once you have a lot of energy, it's fascinating how very few things can disturb you. You sort of become unstoppable. Your personality transforms because you have this self-awareness that you didn't have once before. And you also begin to get mastery over your human faculties. And once you have more control over yourself, you slowly start to shift into what I call a creative consciousness over a victim consciousness. You start to believe that life is a product of your actions and not just happening to you due to the circumstances in your environment around you. And you know, I find um, observing nature um, absolutely fascinating. And nature is beautiful. And there are simple things in nature that we can learn from. Take a river, for example. A river is fascinating. <laughs> it keeps moving, you know, overcoming all obstacles. It's just so stubborn in its progression until it reaches its goal, which is the ocean. And so how does one get there? How does one sort of cultivate a... A mindset like that. And I think in, in my experience, it begins by building habits for high energy. Now, my curiosity um, and experimental nature has, has led me to understand that the human beings are just a bundle of chemicals. Think about it. Human experience is based in chemistry. And at our core, we're just atoms vibrating and oscillating at different frequencies depending on the organ of the body. So if you work towards optimizing your chemistry, and also if you work towards optimizing your frequency at which your body is working at, your energy levels have no choice but to absolutely transform. So what does it mean to optimize your chemistry and your frequency? And I feel like the first step is to realize that the body the default state of the body and the mind is to be in a state of calm, healing, and also potentially high energy. A small example is when you cut your finger, the body automatically starts to work to heal the cut over a period of time. So your body wants to be healthy, it wants to be fit, and the big question we have to ask is how do you make it easy for it to get there? Now it's very difficult, honestly, with modern lifestyle, but it's not impossible. And the approach that's worked for me is to figure out how to optimize my chemistry and as much as I can, my frequency. And the simplest way to put this is that there are five elements. There is the body that has the diet and movement. There is the mind, which is meditation and what you consume. And then there is sleep that impacts both the body and the mind. So you have right diet, right movement, right meditation, right consumption, and right sleep. So let's talk about the body and right diet in particular first. So did you know that for every wire that goes from the brain to the gut, nine or 10 wires go from the gut to the brain? And over 70%, and I believe the number is possibly closer to 90% of the serotonin produced in the body actually comes from the gut. So over a period of time, you think and feel the way you eat. I find that fascinating. And you know, secondly, the food that you eat turns into your body. It literally becomes the gross body that we have. So you literally become what you eat. In Ayurveda, it's said that food is meant to be medicine for the body. And when food stops becoming medicine, 
one begins to need medicine. And if you look at food today, food today is far more pleasure than medicine. It is not eaten for nutrition, it's eaten for how good the food tastes. As a result, our diets consist much more of food that feels good to our taste buds, but is not necessarily good for our system. So as a result, it's most likely that our body is working over time to process all this not so good food for us. And thus one has lesser energy available for other things. Next up is movement for the body. In yoga, there's a saying that the experience of happiness in the human form is the result of the movement of our life forces in our bodies. And so when life force stops moving freely, energy becomes stale, and thus we have dis-ease, we have disease. So it's very important to ensure that there is movement of life forces in our, in our bodies on a daily basis. And our modern lifestyles are a little anti this. There's too much sitting, sitting inside cubicles all the time. So we have to then build the extra habits to counter all of this. What's worked for me? Um, simple yoga every morning, 10, 15 minutes every day, and a 20 minute to 30 minute run plus a 15, 20 minute high intensity workout at least every second day. And I picked up everything I know from this one app called Nike Training Club. It's incredible. And I must say we also live in an amazing time. One just needs a mat and motivation and you literally have a coach in your smartphone on demand any time you want. <laughs> An additional benefit of yoga is that it has a way to bring peace to the body. In the way meditation brings peace to the mind, yoga has a way to bring peace to the body. And the best way that I can describe this is that I feel like yoga has a way of improving the body's geometry um, to bring it more to its natural state. Likely countering some of the habits that we pick up in our modern day lifestyles. Now, if your body's geometry is good, then it's likely more efficient in the way it operates, even when uh, it's at rest. So you're spending less energy, your body's spending less energy doing what it needs to do, which would likely give you that little extra energy available in your day to do the stuff that you want to do. Next, let's come to sleep for a bit. You know, nature has built the human form in a way that we need to be plugged into whatever it is happens during sleep. There is probably a good reason for it. If you look to the West, the West has broken sleep into multiple stages. The two particularly important ones are SWS, which is slow wave sleep or deep sleep, the time when your muscles are repairing and growing. It's during this stage that the body produces 95% of its daily supply of growth hormones. And then you have the REM sleep, the rapid eye movement sleep, which is when the brain is restored. And it's likely at this time that ideas and skills acquired during the day are cemented as memories. And if you look more to the Vedic and yogic lines of thinking, they talk about how sleep is the human form connecting with a super consciousness to help repair and, and regenerate the body and the mind. And if you look at it from both perspectives, they come from different sides, but they talk about the same thing. So regardless, sleep is incredibly important and it's one of those things that is incredibly difficult to prioritize in our modern day lifestyles given we have so many distractions for the senses in modern day living. And taking control of my sleep was game changing. I'm one of those people who likes to be 110% every day and I can't do that unless I have seven, eight hours of sleep. And you know, sleeping more doesn't mean you're working less. Sleeping more doesn't mean you're you're being less productive. It just means one, maybe two hours less of Netflix <laughs> or other distractions that you may have in your life. Let's come to meditation. You know, research shows that the brain goes into theta wave activity during meditation, which has an incredibly positive impact on the mind, the body, and also the connection between the two. There are tremendous benefits to the human form during meditation. And it's one of the ways to bring the mind back to its natural state, its natural state of calm, healing. And it's a great habit to develop as your mind learns 
and begins to know what it feels like getting to its natural state more regularly. Another perspective is, in my last audio diary, I talked about how we're spiritual beings incarnating into human form and how the human form, the body, mind, intellect are just tools for us to use to make our way in the material world. And meditation is a great way to put some space between you and your human form, between you and your mind. And it's a great way to, as a result, develop tremendous amount of self-awareness. I started meditating a decade ago, and it began with all the stuff I talked about right now. It began as a way to unlock more energy, unlock more um, you know, potential for my human form. And so I now meditate for at least 45 minutes every day. Part of it is getting ready for the meditation, which is the breathing. And a significant portion is the meditation itself. And I also spend anywhere between three to five hours, at least every second Sunday, sitting in silence. And so meditation for me also has become so much more than just... Um, disconnecting from the mind. It's a way to go beyond and transcend beyond the body, mind, and the intellect and tap into something higher, deeper. And maybe it's a, it's a you know, I like calling it hanging out with the universe or hanging out with God, if one can even say that. So there are three things I'd love to leave you with on the topic of meditation. The you know, first is many people I meet say, Coven, I can't meditate. I can't turn my mind off. Well, you can't turn your mind off. <laughs> the mind's job is to think. And I'd flip it and say, the purpose of meditation is not to turn your mind off. The purpose of meditation is to just sit. It's to just sit with your eyes closed for 10 minutes without any external stimulus. It's to sit with zero expectations. Just sit with your eyes closed for 10 minutes. Start there. Once you can do this, then you can move to the next step, which is to find something to focus on. It could be a thought. It could also be an area on your body. The yogis will tell you to focus on the area in between your eyes, on the, on the forehead, which has tremendous benefits. And thirdly, I find that consistency is more important than duration. It's training the mind every day to sit for that 10 minutes and start small and build your way up in a way that's natural to you. Every single human form is different. When you do all of the above, your energy flow in the human body is significantly better. And two things tend to happen. One, your sleep requirement will drop because the body needs a little less recovery because you have all these fantastic habits in your life. And second is the waking hours of your day are so filled with a higher base level of, level of energy. So you're much more present in each moment. You're present in work, with family, with friends, and as a result, your productivity skyrockets because you can spend much more time doing what you love. And more importantly, you end up accomplishing so much more in each of those hours that you're awake because you're, you have so much more energy. And what's interesting is, you know, we live in a world that I feel like is encouraging the degeneration of the human being. Um, it's cool to look forward to Fridays to hate Mondays, to eat junk food. It's cool to work with four hours of sleep. It's complete nonsense. <laughs> it's the best way to screw up your energy. And so modern living often sort of encourages um, to put the body and the mind in a place where it can't heal itself. So one has to purposefully do stuff during the day, build these habits, cultivate these habits to find your way back to that sort of state where the body and mind have calm um, can heal themselves even if for 10 20 minutes per day because small gains tend to compound so to sum it up we have the right diet and the right movement for the body we have the right meditation and right consumption for the mind and then we have the right sleep for both the body and the mind 
And if you do even a majority of these, they will tremendously help you optimize your chemistry and your frequency and give you a lot more energy in your daily living. As you can probably tell, everything I've spoken about isn't rocket science. It's information that's easily available online. And through my experiences, all I've done is experimented, validated, invalidated, and figure out what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And I encourage you to do exactly that. Building habits for high energy is quite easy. It just requires a little bit of discipline. And it doesn't need to be perfect because just remember something is better than nothing. Even small gains tend to compound every day. You know, time is a very powerful force in our lives. Time can take the good and compound that and time can take the bad and compound that too. So how do you get time on your side? And time will take those positive 1% gains that you're making every day and produce astronomical results in your life. And this is a great opportunity for you to just begin, just begin building habits for high energy.